When I start shooting, all y'all gonna clear out. Today we have a new quote unquote leak. And I think this is a great opportunity to talk about all of these characters, regardless of whether or not it's real or fake, which we'll definitely get to by the end of this video. So starting from right to left, let's start off with Roger. Roger is a tragedy. I tell this story a thousand times, but there's a million Tekken fans and none of them know the what happened basically. Roger can never be in a Tekken game ever again. Unless PETA decides to change their mind, Roger will be cut. Back before Tekken 7 released, Roger was supposed to be in that game. I know it's hard to think about this. For people who haven't heard the story, they're probably like, what is he talking about? But here's the news article. The source, Tekken 7 Roger, the kangaroo cut, cut due to animal activists. Kuma the bear still in because he's stronger than a human being. Back in like 2016, 2017, there was a super viral video of a kangaroo headlocking a dog and then the guy jumped out and then punched the kangaroo. That went viral. But also you had a lot of people who were upset saying this is animal cruelty, animal abuse, yada, yada, yada. PETA gets involved and you know how they are. They like the internet justice. They wanna pretend like they're doing something, but don't actually do anything. When they heard about Tekken 7, which was releasing at the same time, and they caught wind of a kangaroo being in a fighting game, they was like, yes, this is the perfect time to get some kind of justice. And they basically told Harada, take that kangaroo out the game or you cannot sell it in the US. That's basically the power that they have. They can slap your game with like promoting animal cruelty and then boom, it can't sell in the US. And we all know how big of a market fighting games are for the US. So Harada was forced to pull out the kangaroo. And then the reason that they gave that Kuma can stay is because bears are obviously stronger than humans. And by that, they mean that kangaroos are not. As I explain it, I understand how stupid the story sounds. It is, but this is what they said to Harada and Harada just had to bite the bullet and agree. For that reason, Roger could never be in Tekken ever again, as long as PETA is involved. We do have some kind of safety though. The character Alex, who's also on this screenshot. I honestly think that Alex is a very good contender for being DLC, whether it's season one or season two. Ties to G Corporation, ties to Kazuya Mishima, his story back in Tekken 2 hinted that something great was coming. This would be a character who is perfect for the environment of Tekken 8 and all of the chaos and destruction that's being caused. Nothing bad to say about him. Now, Armor King. Armor King is also another character who players believe will be in the game. Like, you'll have to be a fool to think Armor King would not. It's sad that he will be sold twice as DLC. I really do not like the sound of that, and I wish that he would have been base roster, but I understand you don't want to bloat the roster. I understand they want to sell things and this and that, yada, yada, yada. What I will say about Armor King, and I've been saying this for quite a while if you watch the live streams, I don't think Armor King, Eddie, or Bruce will be in the same season pass. I feel like that's just way too fire for season one and they will wanna spread those three characters out. In my opinion, I think Eddie will be at the end of season one, I think Bruce will be somewhere in season two, and I think Armor King will be season three because you wanna save the heavy hitters for later so people will buy the next season passes, right? So so what is this character here? This knockoff Liu Kang Kung Lao, I don't understand what they're trying to convey with this character. I mean, I'm looking at it, but I just don't understand who it's supposed, oh, is this is this supposed to be Li Wu Long? Which is another character who I also think will not be in Tekken 8. If this character shows up, it's gonna be season three or season four. A lot of us know the whole meme with Harada where he says, don't ask me for sh He doesn't like questions. He doesn't like the community giving their opinions on what they want and don't want. That's the whole shtick. But a lot of people do not know Know that the source of that started with this character and at the beginning of it it was not a joke it was not something that he says for last he was serious he was angry back before this character came out people begged for him put Li Wu Long in the game as then they finally did and no one played him one of the least popular DLC characters in all of Tekken 7 by a mile Noctis is more popular than him so Harada was very upset by that 
you guys beg for this character and then we put them in a game and you didn't you don't even play them and that is when the meme don't ask me for anything spawned is because they felt like the community was being ungrateful the fact that that character sparked that 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 meme and the developers had that stigma and if you look at their news articles that they talk about going on from that and even some around the time they kind of still talk about that how people request things and then they don't actually play it when it's uh, delivered so uh, actually we brought her back this time because of all the feedback and requests on on Facebook and Twitter but if she's not popular this time then that'll mean that everyone saying how popular she is and to bring her back will, would have been lying so this is your chance to prove that she's actually popular with the fans. June Kazama, her usage in the, what is it called, the Tekken 8 closed network tests, they already said the character's underperforming. Now you can make up your reasons as to why, but once again, you have a character who's highly, highly requested. And then the character is already, before the game even comes out, she was underperforming. So you could just see how people saying something doesn't actually trans transfer into player usage. I think there's a reason why these characters disappeared and some of them should stay disappeared. Not Jun Kazama, not Lee, but other characters out there, keep them in the past. Talking about keep them in the past. I don't think this character will be DLC. If they do, I think they should do the female version of Julia, which is JC, so much better in every way, but also the personality is different, the character's different. Julia is such a lost cause. They took this character from what she was and they turned her into something that's completely like different, like it's bad. I don't really want to talk about the story of this character, but it's horrible. I think JC, if they was to put a Julia type of character as DLC, it should be JC. She was made canon in Tekken 7, but now she needs to make a canon appearance in Tekken 8 if that's what they want to do. But talking about whether or not this is real, looking at her picture screams fake. This looks like some, it's not even AI. It just doesn't even look like Julia. It just looks so bad. Like even Paul Phoenix, Raven, Brian Fury, these look like the characters. This Julia doesn't look like her. It looks like something completely different. Now let's move on, Fakamram. Fakamram, huh? My predictions for the Muay Thai characters, the kickboxing characters was this. So it's three of them, Fakamram, Josie, and Bruce. There's no way all three of those characters show up as DLC. There's no way. I was thinking there was a slim chance that it could only be one that shows up. I thought they would do Bruce base roster and Josie DLC, or if they really wanted to cash in, they would do Josie base roster and Bruce DLC. And if you think about Aquafina being a replacement of sorts for Josie, they're kind of already sticking to that. You have a Josie hybrid kind of kickboxing martial arts character on the base roster, and you can sell the person that everybody really wants, Bruce, is DLC. The reason why I don't think Fakaram will be DLC is because, one, a lot of people don't like him. Fakaram is just despicable. Despicable. He's despicable. He's everything that I dislike about Tekken 7 and I don't want to fight him anymore. You know, I, I just don't. And then also when you talk about his usage falling off a mountain, that guy got nerfed and I've probably seen like 10 Fokker moms this whole entire year since the nerf. People only love this guy because he was so powerful and without power, he's nothing. At least people actually like Josie. They actually play Josie. I'm assuming this last character on the end is supposed to be Eddie. And I really don't need to say enough uh, anything about Eddie. I think we all would agree that Eddie's going to be in Season 1 DLC. And it's, it's a no-brainer for him to be there. And with that being said, let's scorch this and, and explain very simply why I think it's fake. One, you have Roger. Roger's a no-go. Two, Lee Wu Long. He's a no-go. But then three, there is seven characters here. Seven. They showed us the format for season one DLC. Four characters. We would assume that season two will also be four characters. So how do you end up with seven? The fact that there's seven characters here tell me that this is a hundred percent fake. But I just want to talk about this in a video because I thought this would be a 